I love convertibles. Unfortunately, they are usually small cars with tight interior designed to drive on even tarmac, a bigger pothole or a stone on a dirt road, and you're in trouble. This is why many people prefer SUVs. They give them a feeling of security. They give them a feeling of practicality. You can take them a bit further off-road. The problem for me is that they offer, well, at most, a panoramic roof. And I don't like cars with roofs. This is why I fell in love with the Range Rover Evoque convertible. Let me make one thing clear. Range Rover's Cabriolet is in no way innovative or unique. If you want an off-roader with removable top, you could buy a Land Rover Defender, Jeep Wrangler is still on sale, and Mercedes recently launched G-Wagon-based Maybach G650 Londolet. But Jeep is very much utilitarian and Maybach is very much not. I searched my memory and then I searched the memory of a friend of mine who knows everything about everything and we could not think of anything that's currently on sale that would be like the Evo convertible. A few years ago Nissan offered the Murano Cross Cabriolet but that was ridiculously expensive and was not available in Europe. Moreover, Murano looks questionable at best. You have to squint your eyes to see anything more than a four-wheeled hideous monster after skull trepanation. From this perspective, Range Rover Evoque convertible is like an Alfa Romeo in Wolfsburg. Let's face it, Range Rover Evoque is no ugly car and the three-door, as impractical as it may be, is also quite beautiful, my subjective opinion. Go type something nasty in the comment section if you must. Every modern journalist will tell you that if a car has not been designed from scratch as a convertible, then chopping the roof off means losing rigidity. And in order to compensate for it, the floor needs some reinforcement. And this, in turn, makes the car heavier. And indeed, reinforcing the Ford Mondeo platform makes the Evoque convertible a quarter of a ton heavier than its three-door counterpart. This costs 0.8 second in 0 to 100 km per hour sprint, it takes more than 8 seconds now. The fuel consumption suffers as well, 8.2 liters per 100 km combined is almost a liter more than in Evoque Coupe. Honestly, I couldn't care less because I don't expect Evoque convertible to be sporty or fuel efficient. Anyway, these figures are similar to what Land Rover Discovery Sport should have allegedly achieved with the same 240 horsepower 2 liter turbocharged engine and like Discovery Sport also Evoque comes nowhere near. Anything below 12 liters per 100 kilometers combined is a good result. Top of the line motor comes with a 68 liter tank so you're looking at a range of realistically speaking 450 500 kilometers. Choosing a diesel will not help much because diesels get a 54 liter tank and anyway if you're buying a diesel convertible, I don't want to know you. Loss of rigidity is more of a problem, 250 kilograms more and on bigger bumps the chassis still flexes. You'll say, sure, but nobody's going to take this car off-road. To which I'll reply, well, Range Rover claims Evoque convertible can wade in water up to 50 centimeters deep, so someone was thinking about off-roading after all. But I'm still not bothered! I can now enjoy top-down driving experience also in moderate terrain and maybe even take some friends along for the ride. Preferably with the roof up though. For a cabriolet, Evoque has decent aerodynamic properties. I mean the passenger's point of view. Even with the windows down, there is not much turbulence in the cockpit up to about 90 km per hour. Probably it's partly due to the car's height and partly due to its size. 
In order to protect yourself from the wind, especially on colder and humid days, you can mount a wind deflector in the back. Unfortunately, my esteemed colleagues testing the car before me broke it. I do not condone brute force, but I know bad design when I see one, and car wind deflectors are usually badly designed, so folding them can be a nightmare. I'm talking to you, wind deflector manufacturers. Like in Land Rover Discovery Sport, also in the Vogue, steering could be more direct, but this is supposed to be an off-roady type of car, so higher steering ratio makes off-road maneuvers easier. Evoke can be equipped with adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist or trailer park assist. You can also specify 360 degree camera system and a system warning you about cross traffic during reversing. Suspension is so soft the car dives heavily upon braking. Remember that. Nine-speed ZF Automatic shifts gear seamlessly, but if you want more performance, put it into sport or use the paddles. Speaking of the paddles, they may be a tad too close to the wheel and you can pull them by mistake. Interior quality is top-notch. This is what I felt lacking in Land Rover Discovery Sport. In a car which costs as much as a BMW, I'd expect at least the same level of quality. Discovery Sport was like the X3, but first generation. Evoke interior is flawless. Optional Touch Pro infotainment system makes a good first impression, but down the line I found it somewhat slow. It's not as good as that in a BMW i. know I criticized BMW iDrive for not being as good as the Porsche infotainment system, but chances are you're more likely to experience BMW than Porsche Panamera. You can have the infotainment system with online services as well. A couple of things convertible owners will look for. The glove box, that's connected to the central lock, but storage under the armrest, where charging points for all your expensive gadgets are, this cannot be locked. An armrest in the back makes traveling comfortable. There is also a ski hatch behind it, which also remains unlocked, so a skillful thief can reach into the boot and pull out smaller items. Or he'll just open the boot. Since 2002, all new cars sold on US market need to have an emergency boot release with this fluorescent yellow handle. Apparently, kids would get locked in the boot too often. If you ask me, if one is too lightheaded to count their children and to look in the boot, perhaps one should not be driving in the first place. But what do I know? Anyway, my arm is a few centimeters too short, but a taller person or a thief with a trash grabber or a medical grasper could easily get inside the boot. By the way, at 251 liters, the boot is ridiculously small for this big a car. Even the new Suzuki Swift has a bigger boot. Leaving the roof mechanism in plain sight is also ridiculous. I can admire it from the outside, through the glass here, or from the inside, where I see a vertical element protruding in my rear view mirror. Prices of Range Rover Evoque Cabriolet start at 51,000 euro, but don't bother if you don't have at least 70 grand lying around. This test car is specced out to 76k, and that's without the fancy driver aids. I won't look you in the eye and tell you this car is worth the money, because it's not. But I'd love to own one anyway. And what do you think of Range Rover Evoque Cabriolet? Do you like the idea of a convertible SUV, or maybe you'd rather spend the money on a Volvo V90 cross country? Let me know in the comment section below. Subscribe, rate, and share. New episodes every Friday. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.